You are about to watch a preview of a Sopography film and if you would like to watch the full film and over 600 others, please head to www.sopography.co.uk and become a member. Whoa, mate, get in. Yes, sick linear as well. This is what you come to Lakes Like Horseshoe for. The rig that I'm here to talk to you today is one that I've used for about 10, maybe even 15 years now. Oh mate, they are out there, aren't they? Just as I was starting to think I'd called it wrong, this one's turned up and I've seen another couple show on the spot soon, so yeah, I reckon it looks pretty good for another chance as well. I've always thought one of the really nice things about this rig is the fact that it can be really adaptable. You can fish it over almost any type of lake bed, really. Um, silt, weed, gravel, anything. Mate, it's, I'm sure it's a good in this. I've always found, touch wood, with this rig, that it hooks them really, really well, and yeah, they just don't fall off, which is, you just can't ask for anything more than that out of a rig, I don't think. The rig that I'm here to talk you through on this trip is one that I've used for about 10, maybe even 15 years now. Uh, it's one that we just jokingly christened the Gamma Rig back in the day because of the material that we used to tie it with. So we're at Horseshoe Lake in Gloucestershire this morning. Uh, I've only been here about an hour or so, but I've actually got a couple of rods in already. Didn't really have any plans to kind of rush into uh, to fishing too soon. Just wanted to have a really good look round and try and find some fish first. Uh, it's one thing the Horseshoe Carp are known for, and that is showing themselves, even at this time of the year. You know, it's late March. It's actually really quite chilly today as well. I don't think it's scraping much over 10 degrees, if that quite a bitterly cold sort of northeasterly wind as well so didn't really think we'd see too many but obviously wanted to have a really good look around first so did see one or two admittedly quite small fish uh, over in summer bay right off the back of the wind but there was a couple of guys setting up around there and to be honest i think i would have felt a bit penned in uh, over there so come around into winter bay to have a little look and uh, yeah sort of first of the big swims over on the Whitney Bank, actually where this northeasterly is pushing into. I'd only been in here a few minutes, seen one wallop out, a couple of minutes later seen another one and then two more. So even though I am right on the end of this cold wind, uh, it does look really good and yeah, there's clearly a few fish out there as well. So last few weeks I've been fishing over at Stone Acres and I've been using zigs over there. Uh, so I already had some set up on my rods ready to go, hooks were still pin sharp. So just trimmed the links down a little bit to make 100% sure I was fishing. Trimmed them down to about five foot or so maybe. A couple of fresh bits of foam on there uh, and whacked them out in the zone where I'd seen those couple of fish. So don't really want to do too much more than that for the time being. Just want to hopefully see a few more shows. Let the carp tell me where they are, where they're happy and then think about doing some spot finding and getting some bait and some rigs on the deck uh, later. One thing that the horseshoe fish are known for, as well as showing, uh, is that they do like a little bit of bait. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a good few hours first and just um, and just see what pans out. So probably stick a brolly up and stick the kettle on, make myself comfortable and uh, yeah, and see what happens. This is really dodgy. Oh, that was perfect. Oh! Second one was a little bit further this way. But it's close enough. Well, there we go. It's not been out there too long. Well worth. Well worth getting those zigs out there quick as well. Be a bit gentle with it being on a zig. Sometimes slightly tenuous hook holds, but. Come on, there you go. Whoa. God, that's buzz we've got to bite so quickly. There's always a temptation. 
when they've gone solid in the weed just to heave, but usually, oh, a bit of patience goes a long way. Cut me off, actually. Do you know what? That actually felt like it was either behind a bar or behind a snag. Yeah, it's cut me off like part way down. Yeah, it's the main line that's gone. Oh, no. Very often things in your angling kind of just evolve um, through little tweaks, little changes, and you know, they don't necessarily have one absolute um, sort of inception point. And yeah, this rig really was very much that for me. It was an evolution, I suppose, um, of uh, a few different things. It came about through wanting to fish smaller hook baits. So um, wanting to present sort of 11 and 12 mil pop-ups uh, on a rig that was kind of bulletproof, I suppose, for want of a better word, um, and something that wasn't too delicate and something that would reset itself um, in the same way that kind of the more industrial sort of stiff hinge rig does, which was something that I'd used for years. It's an amazing rig, great big carp rig, um, perfect for sort of fishing 14, 15, 16 mil pop-ups, you know, especially cork balls or, you know, really buoyant hook baits um, that have got enough buoyancy to hold up really what's quite a heavy rig, you know, but you just can't really tie that that sort of presentation with a little 11 mil pop-up. It just doesn't really sit the same, you know, and um, you'd need an unbelievably buoyant 11 miller to hold something like that up. So I wanted something, like I say, that would let me fish uh, an 11 or 12 mil pop-up in the same way that the stiff hinge rig kind of works in so much as how it resets the hook bait. Um, if, you know, Big carp shift a lot of water. So if you've got a few fish feeding on your spot, you know, there's lots of water getting moved around from the tails, from the fins, when they're feeding, you know, you cast out, there's no way that hook bait of yours is sitting perfectly the whole time it's out there, be that 12, 24, 36 hours or whatever. There's no way that's sitting perfectly all the time. It's getting moved around, be it by carp or tench or even birds if you've got stuff like that, you know, on your spot as well. So um, I wanted something that incorporated uh, a, a stiff boom to help the rig relay itself out basically every time if it did get disturbed. Also I wanted something that would let me fish a hook bait really close to the lake bed as well. I think a lot of people 10 maybe 12 years ago, 15 years ago were sort of fishing higher pop-up rigs because the hinge almost necessitated really fishing a couple of inches um, off, the, off the lake bed. But again I just wanted something that was um, a perhaps a little bit more subtle and sort of slightly different to that. So. Yeah, really, that was the kind of motivations for, um, yeah, for, for starting to have a play around with the rig. And it was actually, it was an old piece in Carp World uh, for, uh, written by Sean Harrison that sort of gave me the idea. And uh, he was tying up like a sort of old fashioned combi rig uh, with an all bright knot using, I think, just a kind of like normal mono and braid, but like a longer braid section. And I think from memory, I think he was just fishing it uh, as a bottom bait setup. And I just thought that something like that could be adapted potentially really nicely uh, with a stiffer boom, a much shorter braid section and a different kind of hook bait attachment to let you fish a really low pop-up rig. So I started playing around with a few different materials, um, started just using some more standard monos first and then uh, found uh, a fluorocarbon uh, called Gamma. Uh, and between a few of us actually, just, just friends, um, the rig actually ended up getting coined the Gamma Rig. Like, I'm not a fan of kind of, you know, giving a rig a name that you've invented uh, particularly, but, you know, more than anything, it was just something, you know, between ourselves that, you know, that we could refer to it by and because that was the material that we used to tie it. So it was a really nice fluorocarbon, heavy, like not too stiff, not like some of the really stiff boom materials, something that had a little bit of giving it, but would still, you know, would still relay the rig out nicely and tied with a sort of super short bit of braid um, and a curved shank hook, you can sit like an 11 mil pop-up, literally just the height of the hook basically off the, off the lake bed. And around about that time as well, I'd started playing with the little hook ring swivels as well. And with one of those sliding on the shank, 
just gives you the perfect hook bait attachment uh, for, for a little pop-up. And yeah, started using it um, initially on Sandhurst, actually, uh, when I was fishing up at Yateley, when I was fishing the car park, uh, I'd always have half a dozen trips on Sandhurst during the spring, because that was open in the closed season. Obviously the fishing on the car park was really difficult. You know, it was very slow. Obviously you weren't catching many. Certainly not the sort of place where you want to be experimenting with rigs or sort of trying things out. Whereas Sandy was always really good for a bite. Um, you know, if you got it right on there, you could catch half a dozen or more um, per trip. So it was great for experimenting. And um, yeah, I started using it on there in the springs and it just worked incredibly well. Um, the little 11 mil pop-ups on there were, were just fantastic. They worked incredibly well. And can't remember the exact kind of stats now, but I'm sure at one point I was kind of upwards of kind of 35 or 40 fish without a single hook pull um, on there, like in the space of, of, of one spring, you know, which I think from any rig is kind of as much as you could ever ask. I think, uh, you know, I've never really played around with rigs too much. Like I'm very particular with how I tie them, but I don't tend to change or experiment too much. You know, I like to use things that I really trust um, and that I know work that hook up and stay in. You know, really, that's all I want from a rig. And um, yeah, this, this rig, I think, does those things really, really well. Hopefully you enjoyed what you've just seen. And as I said at the start of this video, if you'd like to watch this film in its entirety, please head over to www.sopography.co.uk and join today.